In 1922, physicists Otto Stern and Walter Gerlach conducted an experiment that would change our understanding of the atomic world forever. They wanted to test a bold idea from the emerging field of quantum mechanics, spatial quantization. The idea that the orientation of angular momentum in atoms could only take certain discrete directions. Before we dive into the surprising results of this experiment, Let's take a moment to understand its key components. What made this setup so special? Why did they choose silver atoms? Why was the magnet designed in such a unique way and what kind of magnetic field did it produce? Most importantly, how did the results of this experiment completely shock the physicists of that time and challenge everything they thought they knew about the atomic world? At the heart of the stern gerlach experiment was the oven where solid silver was heated to around 1000 degrees Celsius, causing the silver atoms to vaporize and escape through a small slit. Silver was chosen because it has a single unpaired electron in its outermost shell, making its magnetic behavior simple and easy to study. And because silver atoms are neutral, meaning they're only affected by magnetic fields. Let's talk more about why they used silver. Silver can be vaporized in a straightforward way and was a good option which was accessible. Silver atoms in the gas phase exist as monatomic particles, meaning they do not form diatomic molecules like oxygen, O2, or nitrogen, N2, or other compounds. This ensures that the beam consists of individual silver atoms, which is necessary for studying their magnetic properties. In addition, silver is a noble metal and is chemically inert under normal conditions. This means that silver atoms in the gas phase do not react with each other or with the walls of the experimental apparatus, ensuring that the beam remains pure and stable. Silver atoms are neutral, meaning they are not affected by electric fields, only by magnetic fields. This allowed them to ensure that any deflection they observed was purely due to the interaction of the atoms with the magnetic field, eliminating any complicating factors. These are collimating slits, which are narrow openings or apertures that are used to shape and align a beam of particles, in this case, silver atoms. They ensure that the atoms travel in a well-defined, narrow path, which is essential for the precision of our experiment. By narrowing the beam, the slits help reduce the number of atoms that are scatter or travel in unintended directions, and this minimizes the background noise and ensures that the detected signal corresponds only to atoms that have passed through the magnetic field. This is the shape of the magnet they used in their experiment. The magnet consisted of two pole pieces, one with a sharp edge and the other with a flat or slightly concave surface. This asymmetric design created a strong gradient in the magnetic field along one axis that we typically call the Z axis. In 1922, from a classical perspective, the magnetic moment of a silver atom was thought to arise from the orbital motion of its electrons around the nucleus. We already know that silver has a single unpaired electron in its outermost 5s orbital. Classically, this electron's orbital motion was expected to produce a net magnetic moment for the atom. The force on the silver atoms arises from their interaction with the non-uniform magnetic field. Each silver atom has a magnetic moment which behaves like a tiny magnet. When these atoms pass through the magnetic field, they experience a force that depends on the orientation of their magnetic moments relative to the field. In a uniform magnetic field, a magnetic dipole experiences a torque but no net force. So it was thought to be rotating without changing direction. From a classical perspective, the magnetic moments of the silver atoms could align at any angle relative to the external magnetic field. This means the Z component of the magnetic moment take on a continuous range of values and as a result, the atoms would experience a continuous range of forces in the non-uniform magnetic field that caused them to be deflected by varying amounts. 
On the other hand, if the Bohr-Sommerfeld model was correct, and considering that the 5s orbital has zero orbital angular momentum, L0, Stern and Gerlach would have expected to see no deflection of the silver atoms. So they would have expected to see a single undeflected beam of silver atoms hitting the glass plate, as there would be no force acting on the atoms to cause deflection. As another example, if Bohr was right, they would have expected to see three lines because of the three magnetic quantum numbers for L1, and the spatial quantization would have shown that Bohr was right. These lines are like this because at the center, the magnetic field is stronger, which causes more deflection, but in the edges, the magnetic field is not strong enough to deflect silver atoms and split the pattern. First, they ran the experiment without turning on the magnetic field just to see what would happen. As expected, the beam of silver atoms sailed straight through the apparatus without any deflection, leaving a single clear line on the glass plate as you can see. And this simple test confirmed that the beam was perfectly aligned and that any changes they would see later would be purely due to the magnetic field. Now it was the time they turned on the magnetic field. When they turned on the magnetic field, the most amazing thing happened. They saw not a continuous pattern, not a pattern with one, three, or another odd number of quantized patterns, but only two single quantized lines. Of course, a spatial quantization was approved and they sent a letter to Bohr to congratulate him on this verification of his theory. But why two split lines? What magnetic moment had caused this deflection of the beam? This amazing experiment, with its surprising results, was one of the most important experiments that led to the concept of spin and couldn't be interpreted solely based on Bohr-Sommerfeld model. In the next video, we are going to start talking about spin, which is an intrinsic form of angular momentum.